Hello friends, welcome to another video of Zeta Axis and today we will discuss what are Himalayas fold mountains and what are the meaning of these thrust boundaries. We already know that Himalayas are basically fold mountains. So we will try to see how these fold mountains are formed and what is the meaning of these folded mountains. And secondly, we will see what are these thrust boundaries. We know that there is main central thrust, there is main boundary thrust and there is main frontal thrust in our Himalayas. So what is the meaning of this? Now as we have already discussed, the whole video series on the formation of Himalayas is divided into three parts. In the first part, which we have already discussed, how these different regions of Himalayas were formed. In this part, we will see how this creation of fold occurs in the Himalayan mountains and what are the meaning of these boundary faults. And in the third part, we will discuss about the syntaxial bands and why Western Himalayas are wider than Eastern Himalayas. So let's start with understanding what are these folds and how they are formed. Now before understanding the folding in Himalayas, let's try to understand this sandbox experiment. Here we can see that there is sand all around in this red border region. We can see that there is blue sand and there is this white sand and there are layers of different colors of sand which we can see over here. So these are different layers. This is a box where this side is fixed and this side has a plunger which can be used to force this sand in this direction. Now when we use this plunger to force this sand in this direction, we can see that different layers of this sand are folded. We can see that the layers are showing this kind of structure. There is a bend over here. This red line indicates the bend in the layers of this sand. And this region, this yellow arrow, it shows the region where this layer is going downwards. And this boundary where this layer is going downwards is called the thrust boundary. And this is called the folded part of this region. Similarly, if we continue pushing this plunger in the forward direction, we will see that a second folding has occurred. Again, we can see here that there is this folding and now there are two foldings. And now there are two regions where this plate is moving downwards. One is before this fold and second is before this fold. So now we have two boundary folds or two thrust folds. And there are two folded parts and these folded parts are lying over each other. Similarly, when we continue to move this plunger in this direction, we can see formation of a third folding. And you can see now there are three folds and each of these folds are lying over each other. So one thing from here we can see that earlier we have seen that Siwali, Lesser Himalayas, Greater Himalayas were formed like this. We have shown them in the vertical structure, but this is not true representation. Actually, the fold mountains are formed like this. They lie over each other. And so therefore, this is a more accurate representation of our Himalayas, where we can see that the lesser Himalayas is lying over Siwaliks and the greater Himalayas is lying over the lesser Himalayas. So all these regions are stacked upon each other. Now here we can see the process of formation of Himalayas. We are seeing the cross section. And in the middle of the Eurasian plate and the Indian plate, we have the Tethys Ocean Crust. And because our Indian plate is moving in the northern direction, we see that the Tethys Ocean Crust is subducting because it is heavier than Eurasian plate. And because of this, we see, we have already discussed in the last video that here, there will be magma formed which will reach up to the surface of the continental plate and it will form volcanic mountains. So we see this formation of trans Himalayan mountains. Moreover, because of this process of subduction, some part of the Tethys ocean crust, it is squeezed in the upward direction and folded. So we see that a Tethian Himalayas is formed like this. Now the oceanic mantle has completely subducted. Now we see that the continental crust and continental mantle is subducting. And because of this subduction process, we see that along this boundary, a compressive force is acting. This compressive force is trying to compress this whole region. And therefore, we see that the folding has started in this region. Now, as this force will continue, we will see that this part of the plate will start to subduct while this part is uplifted. So this region where this compressive force was acting which created the fold is called main central thrust 
and it lies just after the greater Himalayas. Here we can see that this part of plate is moving downwards while this part of plate is moving in the upward direction. Similarly, when the compressive forces continued, we see that there was a boundary over here, which is called main boundary thrust, which created the lesser Himalayas. Now here also the compressive forces kept on acting and therefore another fold was created. And because of this, the lesser Himalayas were uplifted and the boundary where this force acted is called main boundary thrust. Again, we can see that this part is moving in the downward direction while this part is moving in the upward direction. Similarly, compressive forces created Siwadi. Now, if we see the cross section of Himalayas, it would look something like this, which we have taken from the Wikipedia and it was presented by this guy. Now, this is in another language. So, if we translate and use familiar terms, we can see that this is the greater Himalayan region. This is the lesser Himalayan region. These are the Siwaliks. And this is the Trans Himalayas, and here we have in the Sangko Suture Zone. So we can clearly see that there is this Trans Himalayan batholith, which is a part of Eurasian plate. The region where our Indian plate comes in contact with the Eurasian plate is called in the Sangko Suture Zone. The Tethian Himalayas, which were uplifted from the Tethian Ocean, lies above our Indian plate. So we can see that the Indian plate moves below this Tethian Himalayas and comes in contact with the Trans Himalayas. Now this separation between the Tethian Himalayas and Greater Himalayas is called Southern Tibetan Detachment. Similarly, as we move here, we can see that there is Lesser Himalayas and there is Greater Himalayas and this is the main central thrust which created the Greater Himalayas. We can see that one arrow shows here that this part is going down, here the crust is subducting while this shows that this part is moving up. Similarly, at the Siwaliks, we have main boundary thrust which separates Siwaliks from the lesser Himalayas. So the compressive force at the main boundary thrust, it created the lesser Himalayas. And similarly, on the southern direction of Siwalik, we have main frontal thrust which created the Siwalik. Now, generally when we study about Himalayas, we generally come across these two terms, crustal shortening and crustal thickening. So here I would like to explain what is the meaning of these two terms. So crustal shortening is basically a process by which terrains are elevated due to thrusting of one block of or one part of crust over another or by folding of layer of rocks. So basically it means that when there are compressive forces in a region, the plates are uplifted and the length of the plate is shortened. You can see that the length of the crust is reduced because of this uplifting. So we call this crustal shortening. While crustal thickening is basically the thrust seeds which are stacked upon each other. They increase the thickness of the crust and therefore it is called crustal thickening. Here in this video, you can see that there is a continental uh, plate and here it also is a continental plate. Something like our Indian plate and Eurasian plate. Now when this plate, if we consider it as Indian plate, when the Indian plate is trying to subduct, remember the continental crust is much less denser compared to the oceanic crust or the asthenosphere. Therefore, this continental crust will never subduct. In fact, it will move under the continental crust of another plate or the Eurasian plate. So here we can see that the crust is not subducting. Remember, the mental part is subducting, but the crust itself, the continental crust itself will never subduct. And therefore, it moves under the continental crust of the next plate. And therefore, we can see that the crust thickness increases. Remember, this is also continental crust, this is also continental crust and now we have a very wide thickness or the thickness of this crust is increased because it is moving under it. So this process is called crustal thickening. I hope I was able to explain how the fold mountains of Himalayas are formed and what are actually fold mountains and what are these thrust boundaries. If you have liked the video then please subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. And if you like the videos and want to contribute to the process, you can use the QR code in the video.